do really need like artilleries to get a very good odd of actually attacking a settlement though. Artilleries are what are really made for taking and defending settlements. At least I know they're good for attacking. Light artillery is good for defending. Hey, hey, hey. So we found a map and a little goodie hut in the mountains. And we have a sea as still and peaceful as the sky. Not long ago, your explorer peered into the distance in disbelief. Beyond the beach, an endless expanse of water stretched to the horizon. A sea as wide as the sky. He was right, he murmurs. The governor was right. There is a sea route leading west from the new world out into the endless expanse of a new ocean. An ocean whose calm swells seemed so peaceful, as if the thought of storms was just an old sailor's yarn. It shall be called the Pacific Ocean, the Pacificus. We should get an extra special reward. We're maneuvering around this river, by the way, to get a better shot. Oh, uh oh. We were maneuvering to get a better shot, but now the Spaniards are actually responding with a significant force. We are on a marsh, so yeah, unfortunately marsh is not in our list of things that we're stronger in, but we should be able to dissuade them from attacking us because we're on defensive terrain. And that's actually a plus 35% bonus because of the marsh and the hill. So yeah, it looks like we have found the way to the west, but I'm going to keep going up here in the north because why not? Alright, we're going to be doing a little bit of a switcheroo back and forth, so let's drop this garbage. You, sir, should no longer be a pioneer, you should be a settler. You, too, should also be a settler. Now, we should still have plenty more left to make a third settlement. No, we don't. We need more wood. Crap. 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 Yeah. Got enough food on hand, but we wouldn't be able to produce more. Let's have the lumberjack do some work. Build up some of that food. It'll cost not food, but lumber. It'll cost us some food, but that's okay. Alright. So one settler goes on to the merchant man. One settler goes on to the carrick. Well, not the carrick. Let's send you on the the other merchant man. Two merchant men? Yeah, two merchant men, okay. Going to send one carpenter on one of the ships, put a fisherman on one of the ships, send a lumberjack as well with the carpenter, and then we need to send troops. So let's send veteran soldiers on that ship, and then we'll send colonial militia on the ship that's docked. The ship that's docked will also receive how about a firebrand creature to go with it. Alright, so that is going to be two sets of people ready to set up some colonies. Everybody else kind of chill out for a couple minutes. Well, for me, it'll probably be uh, quite a bit longer, actually. Quite a few hours, because I'll probably be taking a break, going to sleep, but for you, it'll be just an instant. Let's pick up some more gems and grapes and all that jazz, and let's actually, let's pick up most of these horses. I want to transport those to pearly gates now instead of later. I'm going to leave enough for the settlers that are required, so we can take 255 north. So we'll take 255. We'll leave the provisions here for now. We can equip pioneers here if we want to later on. In fact, I should probably go ahead and... If I equip a pioneer, does that use a... That leaves enough for settlers, actually. Yes, good deal. So I'll have an indentured servant as a pioneer, maybe? I think it takes them a while. I think they become free, and then they become proper workers, so I don't want to wait that long for a hardy pioneer. I'd rather not do that. Alrighty, it's another day of recording for me, probably about a week after the last recording, and I've been itching to get back into this particular save and see if I can get it going better. At the moment, Portugal has five settlements. We only have three settlements. The Swedes have five settlements as well. The Danes have only two settlements, but they seem to not spread out very much. The Dutch probably only have, yeah, the one settlement, New Amsterdam as well. Then there's the French. The French have five settlements. The Russians, they have two settlements so far. And then, of course, there's Hernan Cortez, who has four settlements, and we're at Warworth at the moment. Again, if I lose any train of thought, it's been like a week. <laughs> but I am very interested in what's going on around Conception de la Vega, whether or not we're going to survive this attack which is probably going to be a conquistador attack. We do have defensive bonus, though. 
so we should be able to scare him off and pull back. We want to use the ranger and the native mercenary that we have to actually... Well, shit, they, they don't actually negate the defensive bonus, do they? Huh. Oh well, well, we'll focus on being in the defensive forest and see where we go from there. I'd like to get some guns into the hands of the mixed tech, but I'm also concerned that they'll use those guns against me eventually. I think there's a very high probability that we're going to expand to the east at some point in time. There's some hemp over here that we can use for making sails and ropes, as well as plenty of food, fruit for making fruit brandy, furs, lumber. This is pretty good land, sugar, and the gems here as well. So long term, I think we attack the Mixtec. Unless we can develop enough trading posts and missions with them, which is something I can consider doing, but in order to do that, I need missionaries which need provisions. So I need to make provisions, provisions either from rice, barley, or cassava. The closest access that we have is actually rice in most of these places. But yeah, let's go ahead and let's get back into it. I know that we're settling two more colonies at the moment, and we're going to be upsetting the Carib even more. They are kind of approaching the point where they'd start attacking us, or at least raiding us. I do need to see if this guy is actually a raider. They are indeed raiders. I think that means that their AI is a little more uh, raid heavy, but I could be wrong. And in the mod, there's uh, raids that can like destroy your progress towards building, steal gold. Pretty sure they can steal like resources. I haven't had that happen yet, but I think they can do it. Now, apparently, we have discovered the Pacific Ocean. What a triumph. One of our explorers has discovered and mapped an ocean in the west of the New World, which undoubtedly leads to China. Gold and glory, we take both. We see between three, 900 and 2,100 gold. Get... 375 exploration points, not a big deal. And then, or just more exploration points. I'll take the gold, because I have a crap ton of exploration points. This particular quest could probably use a little bit of rebalancing to be more interesting, because finding the Pacific Ocean isn't that rewarding. It's decently rewarding, but not substantially to the point that I really care about it. And that's kind of why I was very blase about finding it before, was I remembered in the back of my mind, I think, that that event ain't all that. Alright, the Conquistadors and the Colonial Militia have moved up, so we might want to move into the forest and just secure that against them. But let's take a look here. So we have a 67.4% chance of surviving if we attack. We're not going to do that. We would be stuck in place and couldn't move away from the stack. And then we'd probably get taken out immediately afterwards, so... Us taking this city right now is not going to happen. The best that we can probably do is... Fuck around with them. With their units and stuff down here. But either they cleared the forest, or most of the forest weren't here. There was mostly just marsh. But there's not a lot of defensive terrain in this area. I also don't actually know where their other, other settlements are at. Looks like right here there might be one to the east of Chiho Kao Nu, potentially. If this army decided to, it could move north and then potentially attack us, so that's something to consider as well. We don't have anybody that can really defend Pearl Harbor at the moment. So I think we should just go ahead, we should just back off here a little bit and play, uh, try to catch me basically. Being in that forest is going to make it impossible for them to attack. We can just waste their time pretty much. Alright, we are getting off the boat for our next settlement. This settlement will start with a militia, firebrand preacher, fisherman, and a regular old free colonist. They've got some fish here that they can make use of immediately, so they got the fisherman. And then the second settlement is going to get the Lumberjack, Master Carpenter, and Free Colonist. Although I might want to switch the Master Carpenter with the Mother of Pearl Carpenter. Because I'm not too concerned about developing this particular city very rapidly. Although Mother of Pearl really doesn't do much more than mine pearls. And then we'll go ahead and focus on this western settlement with the Master Carpenter. And then, uh, looking at my colonies, I think the thing that I need, need most is going to be Master Carpenters. I've got some gold on hand, so let's take a look what the cost is. 4,320? Sure, man. I tend to buy quite a few of them because building buildings is integral to getting a lot of the more advanced things rolling, like tool production, gun production, etc. We are founding our next colony, and they have said that when you and yours came to our land, born down and hungry, we received you as our guests, but you have not moved on. You take the fruits of this world, kill our game, cut down our forests. You owe 1,346 gold to pay us for our suffering. No thanks. 
So I'm going to uh, say this land is rightfully ours, found settlement and grew natives. And what shall we call this particular one? Well, we'll have access to rice here, which will be good for making provisions. We'll have access to some iron, but just not a whole lot of food, unfortunately, still. And some timber, too. So this uh, particular settlement will be actually quite powerful. The only, the only issue is going to be feeding it will be a bit of a problem. This is probably going to be one of our primary industry cities, so let's just call it Hammerstruck. What are we going to build first? That's an interesting question. I think we have to start with a pier in order to increase our food income from the water, which is going to be our primary food income. I'm also get an actual fisherman here. In mine silver from that uh, mineral deposit. So that is plus one ore, but plus two silver. Did not realize that. It is only like 40 gold per turn, but that's not terrible. 40 gold per turn is actually pretty good in comparison to say like coffee farming down here, which would only give us 12 per turn. Sugar farming would only give us 12 per turn as well. What about cocoa? Coke would give us 12 as well. Ugh. So silver is actually the best cash income here. Should we grow rice here or ore? Well, obviously we're going to go with rice because we want to make provisions at some point in time. We also need provisions for pioneers in addition to missionaries and scouts. There are some defensive units that use spears and pikes, but I don't often use those. Maybe the royal halper deers are good, but I don't know yet. Anyway, we need to get set up with some actual builders first so we can get that pier rolling. We might need to pull the free colonist out because we won't be able to support him. We can just grow some food and start learning how to be a farmer. It's not a terrible idea. And it'll probably take him about 60 turns to fully upgrade, but that's okay. Currently, if we built a schoolhouse, it would actually take about 60 turns in order for us to teach somebody something. And that's only like a basic skill. And subtle number two is going down right now. Same thing, they are complaining, but we're just going to take it. We have no interest in bargaining with the nearby natives. Could send some missionaries to try to establish missions, but the chance is like 60% with like a free colonist. I can't remember what the chance is with a indentured servant. I'm not sure if it's different or not. It might be 45, but it might also be 60. I can't, cannot recall at the moment. Anyway, what should we name this settlement? Well, we've got fish, we've got birds for feathers if we ever really want to do that, and we've got coal. Now you combine coal and ore to make guns. I believe we do have access to some other hills here, or we could just import iron. So this is going to be like a military gun production facility. Let's call it a fort. Let's call it Fort Cod. I know those aren't cod over there. There's actually a cod bonus resource, which is distinct from fish. It's usually found in the ocean. In my experience. What should we build first? Well we actually got a firebrand preacher here which is a pretty good choice where you have plenty of food from the fishermen. I want to get a chapel built as soon as possible so we'll switch. Actually I'm gonna have the free colonist work as a carpenter so that he can learn how to be a carpenter. I'm gonna have the preacher do some lumber. And we'll get that chapel built in not too long so that the preacher can start doing his thing. That is going to be the goal with that particular location at first. And then do we want to bring anybody to this western city? Well, Fort Cod has plus six on food. They are plus one on health. So are you built on an unhealthy tile right there? You are indeed, okay. But we're coastal and we have the river. So it does overall win out, I think. So we can probably sustain maybe two more colonists over here in Fort Cod. One of which should probably be the coal miner. And the other one could be maybe a failed trader as a carpenter, potentially. Better yet, maybe an indentured servant to do lumber. And then a failed trader, failed trader as well to do carpentry, potentially. I think those are pretty reasonable choices. We have, those, we have, uh, oh my goodness, we have this land is blessed. A loud voice resounds across the square in front of your austere governor's mansion. You walk to the narrow window and look down at the crowd surrounding the crier. This land is blessed, the man announces in a clear voice. Out in the wilderness, the fourth of our settlements has been established in the past week. Fertile fields will be tilled, strong houses built, healthy children born, and the word of the Lord proclaimed. Undoubtedly, we owe this not only to our diligence and the benevolence of the Almighty, but also to the wisdom and prudence of our leader. 
The crowd nods approvingly. Good deal. I think that might be because we have five settlements now. Now that we have five settlements, five settlements, we can start working towards those such and such building and five settlements quests. And those actually have some pretty good rewards attached to them. We got the wagon train done, wagon train done in Pearly Gates, but we need to probably ship that down to the mainland. And then maybe we can uh, spend some time trading with the mixed tech because all of our colonies are coastal. But that wagon train will give us some trade options. Now, what do we build in Pearly Gates? Well, let's see what we need next. We're probably going to need a renowned medic in not too long. We're only at plus one health, but it's not that big a deal. I'm not sure how many more people we're going to add here. We do want a expert rancher at some point in time to start generating horses for us. Because horses are worth a lot of money in Africa, they sell for 10. So we could sell them, or we could also use them for we need them for settlers, of course, and then scouts and dragoons, etc. The dragoons aren't that important at the moment, but settlers are, and scouts are too, but we don't need that many horses for settlers, so we can sell some of them. And Pearly Gates doesn't really produce anything in particular, so I kind of think that we should just focus on increasing our cross production first with a church. That means that we're going to need clay, I'm going to need stone. So you have built your first wagon train. Commercial traders of your colonies urge you to build at least five to supply the inland cities so your own goods can dominate domestic trade. If you are the first nation to do so, they offer a reward. What do as the traders ask? Our wagon trains shall travel the roads of the new world, delivering goods to markets in all the colonial cities and to our native neighbors. Yeah, eventually. Oh yeah, uh, so Ray Stuttgart, like the primary modder on uh, We the People, let me know something that you can actually speak to your king, and you can do things like, could you help us acquire a used ship for a good price, or give us some military? So they can't be bothered with such business at the moment, but that's okay. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can talk to the other kings, like the king of Portugal here. So we could ask them to help us hire skilled workers for our colony, we'll pay a good price, or make a trade proposal, can't trade anything. So what happens when he asks for help? A master tanner for 2,275 gold, that's a good discount for this dude. Huh. I didn't know that you could actually interact with the other people and have there be like a reason to do that. I mean the king. You can also send your ships into European cities or your wagon trains to trade directly with the Europeans. So that's also pretty cool. I haven't done that. And we're a little too far away from the other Europeans to actually trade with them. So that'd be much more of a smaller map kind of thing. So yeah, if you ever need like a used ship, try to get one from your king. It's like a guaranteed discount a little bit. Of course, you can't see the stats of the ship. So you kind of have to know ahead of time what the ship is. I would recommend potentially going to the Europe screen and then scrolling down to the ships and like using your phone to take a picture before asking your king. I'm trying to decide what to do with my ship here, but I'm also kind of wondering if I should just go ahead and buy a expert farmer for a hammer struck. Because we are going to definitely need proper food income there. Just gotta find out what the price is. 1920 Hell yeah, I'll take that deal. We've got a merchant man coming in in one turn that can pick up most of these people here. And then there's a galleon, but the galleon can't people pick people up. My goodness. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the Renown back to pick up more of our people as they spawn. Because we are pumping out a lot of crosses. Quite a few. Not a huge amount, but a decent amount. And I need somebody else to pick up the rest of these people. So that is what it's going to do. I was thinking about using some clay up to the pearly gates up here. But I'm not too worried about that. I kind of think I'm approaching the point where we're growing enough that I'm not going to maybe detail like minor movements like that. So that's probably what I'm going to start doing from now on. We're going to try to like maybe zoom out a little bit more. Although I'll probably still mention like where I'm setting things up. The colonists that I'm moving and training and whatnot. Because I need them for such and such task. Alright, our brig has arrived. We're going to get rid of the gems and the grapes. Pick up a soldier, a fisherman, which we definitely need, a carpenter, and the farmer, and then head back. I could pick up the soldier, but I'm just, just going to leave that for the merchant man that's coming behind it. Ooh, another farmer. He was probably already there, unless I didn't see him. One of the free colonists got chosen for immigration. I don't want to pick that guy. It's a good question. I do need more food. 
I'm just gonna automatically pick him right now. Or should I wait? Let's just wait a little while here. Oh, forget. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's just take him. Oh my goodness, a firebrand as well. Holy shit. I'll take you too. We're immigrating so rapidly. We need, like, food, food, food. In consideration of that, I might actually pick up another fisherman, perhaps. Oh, the mixed tech lost a settlement below there. So they have the Con Conquistador and a Colonial Militia. They have a Royal Dragoon. Holy shit. And a Royal Lion Infantry. Fuck me. Alright, we have to back off because we will lose the fight. Let's see if maybe uh, Hernan Cortez wants to talk. The thing about We the People is that whenever you attack an AI directly, like the first war that you do against them, that usually causes them to receive help from their king. I'll take that piece deal. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, yeah. Maybe we should go ahead and just uh, sell the mixed tech guns while we can. I've got the horse population established in the pearly gates, which means that I actually might want to go ahead and buy a expert rancher. Or maybe it's a master rancher. Expert rancher, 2,880 gold. Yes, please, I'll take that. So I'm sitting in Pearl Harbor with my merchantman here, picking up the colonists that are meant for the Fort Cod. And I'm kind of wondering if I could pick somebody else up on the way because I've only got four cargo slots, but I have three people. So I have one extra cargo slot, so I'm, I want to send somebody over to Hammer's truck. And I think what I've decided to do is I've decided to load up one of the expert miners and have them start working on clay mining. Like, clay's not expensive to buy from Europe. It is five gold each at the moment, but that's still painful. And stone sells for four each, well, buys for four each. So it's not the best choice either. Hey, 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 there's a treasure sitting in the middle of nowhere that is French. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait until it's further away from the natives here. And I'll see if I can attack it in the next turn. We'll find out whether or not I have any issues because I can declare war in the Spanish right now. So I should be able to use the Buccaneer, supposedly. But again, I've had some trouble targeting other people for some reason. Hey, we had an expert rice farmer just appear over here. I completely forgot you existed, my man. There's a long line of people just walking back slowly. Like a conquistador, some more treasures, lots of stuff. So it's hard to keep track of where everybody's at. Now you, sir, you're going to go to Hammerstruck. I'm going to grow rice there. We have lost merchandise, and the Portuguese are competing with our scouts over here in the southwest, just southwest of the Great Desert. We have lost merchandise. My lord, obviously our third trader has failed to strike, failed to deal profitably with the natives. He's now drinking himself senseless in the streets, claiming he endured unimaginable horrors in their camp. He should do something. When natives surrounding us prefer to trade with each other, attacking our own traders, it makes our merchants nervous. Soon, no settler will dare to leave the colony fearing such hostile neighbors. We should find a better way to handle the many different nations of natives who surround us. Hey, it's not my fault. I just found them. We have a bunch of gold here that we're going to sell off. And there's actually a specific tactic that I want to do here. And that is I want to get myself a fast ship with not a great size cargo hold, but a decent size cargo hold. I think privateer might be the best that we can do for that. But I don't want to spend a lot of money. It'll probably have to be a caravel. Screw it. We'll do a caravel. We're going to send the Galleon back no as problem. is. Caravel, you're going to get some guns. And we're going to go and do some arms trading with the mixed tech. To accomplish that, let's send you over to Pearl Harbor first. That'll get you closer. We've got a merchant man in four turns coming in. He can pick up four people. So I'll decide then what I want. I might need more ships. But I also need better colonists. Like I need another master carpenter. But in the next ship, I want to get the farmer, the rancher, the soldier, maybe the preacher, maybe not. He's not that important. So I'd rather get a carpenter. With my little southern detachment here of our rancher and a native merc, what I'd like to do is I'd like to move them into a position where they can defend from the Carib. Like the, these guys are almost exactly the same. I just have some promotions on the ranger. So I'm going to send the ranger over to Fort Cod. I'm going to send the native merc probably over to Hammerstruck, most likely. So I'll do that. Alright, so now I can fight this dude, thankfully. 
Very cool indeed. So let's take this treasure out. I don't think we can... Well, we do capture it, I think. Come on, baby. You're just gonna retreat, aren't you? No, we got him. Defeated him. I just need to find out where exactly they are at. Right here. Good deal. Alright, we captured only 1,000 gold. Oh, terrible. But hey, the Buccaneer actually worked that time, so I'm happy. I've got enough gold on hand that I actually need to wonder if I want to... Oh, hello there, schooner. French schooner. I've got enough gold if I want to. I need to think if I want to buy something or risk the king taking the money. There is also the chance I could have a quest, though, that could give us something really good. So I'm just going to try to float this much gold unless I have something I desperately need at the moment. Because I don't have any passenger ships ready to pick anybody up. I need, like, honestly, I probably need another ship. I can maybe ask my king next turn. See if I can get myself a nice little discount. I have no idea where you guys are at, Shoshone, so no thank you. Alright, Rice Farmer is in position. Let's see if he can at least support himself. He can support himself in terms of food, and now we're making rice as well. We're making 10 rice per turn, which means that we could definitely get a bakery house up and running. It'd be pretty cool to get a expert baker, because we can also sell any provisions that we don't need. And of course, the miner is also going to do his thing and mine some clay, because we need clay to make our buildings. Our fellow trader and indentured servant have arrived in Fort Cod. So we're going to start setting up that production right there. We're generating plenty of lumber to supply our carpenters so we can get up the chapel faster than normal. Now this coal miner, I think I might want to get him started now on mining coal, but although it, it sells before actually in Europe, that's not terrible. And he makes a lot of it, so we'll have him do that. That sounds good to me. And our buccaneer got a promotion. What I'm going to do if Ham's going to make him like a ranger dude. He's going to harass people over here. His objective is to annoy the crap out of the French. Alright, so once I've got my scouts fully upgraded with the Explorer and the Forced March promotions, usually I take one of two paths. I either make them like a combat focused unit or I make them like a medic, a mobile medic. So, I don't know. They've got promotions that make them effective at moving around though and like attacking people, so I should make them a Dragoon later on in their lives. So I might want to go Skirmisher to increase their withdrawal chance, which is another direction I like to go as well. Let's go with that. Let's make them some badass mounted units one day. They can just run around. By the way, look at this uh, log of gold. Just gold, 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 gold from exploration up in the north. Well, the top of the screen. Gigantic maps are just very powerful for exploration. We've got an expert native trader hanging out in Oxwitsa. I think what I want to do is I want to send him to a Q move this direction and then further east into the mixed tech. If we can get them nice enough with us, we can actually build around them. And maybe we'll pay for some of their land. Or we could just assume that we're going to attack them too eventually. So if that were true, then we would probably be better off just standing where we're at. Because these tribes are not as developed as the tribe that we're currently in. Oxwitsa. So let's just go ahead, let's just stay where we're at. No, 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 crap. Yeah, there's no avoiding that, fortunately. We have 7,000 gold now. That is an amount that there are some quests that do want you to have that kind of money, though. There are probably some quests that want you to have even more money than that, actually. But I do need to think about what we need next. We're going to need, like, a doctor for Hammerstruck eventually. I'm also going to need a doctor for Mother of Pearl. We need doctors all over the place because we've been settling in unhealthy terrain. There haven't been very many good options for healthy terrain in this area for locations that make sense. So we just had to deal with it. Actually, you know what? I think it's time we start getting some of those good old-fashioned political points. So we really need a first proper government official, a first elder statesman. So I'll do that. And then I'll, that leads us with at least 1,500 gold for most of the basic quests. Hey, 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 George Fox has offered to join our cause. We welcome him as part of our Continental Congress. He provides two free colonists to one firebrand preacher and plus one cross per level of market or entertainment building. Yes, absolutely, I'll take that. He really goes well with our strategy of just building lots of colonies. And we definitely need to spread out even more than we are right now. Pretty sure that we can hold against the Carib once they come for us. Alright, what shall we do with the Firebrand Preacher and the two free colonists in Pearly Gates? Well, we're about to build a church in Pearly Gates, so the Firebrand Preacher, I think, can chill out here. 
I'll leave him outside the city, because if I put him inside the city, there's a good chance I might forget about him, since it might be a while until I can record again. The free colonist. One of them could probably work as a doctor, actually, instead of the train oil cooker, so that we can start training a proper medic. And then we just send this colonist around from city to city as we get proper medics until he becomes an actual medic.